Hi, my name is Mike Barnett, and I've been researching, locating, and identifying shipwrecks for almost 30 years. When I started, the only way to conduct this process was to travel to museums and libraries to hunt through numerous books and scan miles of microfilm of archived newspapers. Now, things are very different. I have discovered and utilized numerous free online resources that make this task much, much easier. And I'm going to share these resources, as well as several other tips and tricks which will allow you to find and identify shipwrecks from the comfort of your own home. So, let's get started. One of the best online tools for divers and fishermen for finding precise shipwreck coordinates is the NOAA Bathymetric Data website. Now to find this website, all you need to really do is Google NOAA Multibeam. And the first link that comes up is the Multibeam Bathymetric Data website. Click on that, and then the very first link at the top of that page is the Bathymetric Data Viewer. Now click on that, and what it does is bring up a global map showing all sorts of uh, available data. You can basically uncheck all these surveys and only click the bag color shade relief here at left. The bag color shade relief is the multi-beam sonar data that you really want. That's a bathymetric attributable grid. And when you click on that, it'll highlight all the areas that are currently available for with multi-beam sonar data. And as you scroll around, you start finding new wrecks as well, things that might not be known to you. And moreover, when you have a whole bunch of shipwrecks that you haven't confirmed the location, you can use this data to see if the numbers are bogus or if they're actually in the vicinity of a real wreck because you'll see a lot of flat area. And if you have a wreck number there where there's nothing showing, then you can probably rule that out as being a viable wreck. As an example, we use this data to find numerous deep water wrecks off Miami, including an intact Grumman Hellcat lost in World War II. There's quite a few areas that are covered by the multi-beam sonar data. And there's one really interesting area here, just south of Stanford, Connecticut, and Long Island Sound, is basically underwater graveyard. There's hundreds of shipwrecks here, we got, you know, there's barges, there's steamers, uh, freighters, tugboats. You can see all these wrecks laying on the bottom here, and you can get precise position information for each and every one of them. So again, this is an invaluable resource that will save you countless hours on the water searching for shipwrecks. The native viewer only shows three decimal degrees of precision, and that will get you within 360 to about 500 feet of accuracy. But there's a way to get even more precise, and you can approximate that fourth digit. Right here, we're looking at two shipwrecks. We're looking at the Dorothy and the Brazil. These are in the Chesapeake Bay that approaches the Potomac River. And they're only about 1,700 feet apart. Uh, so if you zoom in, so right now we're looking at the Brazil. This is a 308 foot long freighter sunk in a collision with the merchant ship Middlesex in April of 1942. She came to rest upright in about 90 feet of water. And right here, you'll see the bottom left, you'll see the position uh, information with three decimal degrees of precision. But again, if you scroll north and south and east and west, you can see when that third digit changes to give an idea of where in that range it might be so you can approximate that fourth digit. So if it's halfway, you, that fourth digit would be five. If it's three quarters of the way uh, to changing, then obviously it'd be 0.75, uh, et cetera. So that's a great way to get within less than 100 feet of precision. And for a wreck this size, you can basically drive right up on it, which is really useful. So I've been using this website for six or seven years, and over that time they've added new areas. So it's worth checking into every six or eight months or so to see if there's been some new real estate that's been covered and included in the database. So a while back I was scanning the areas off of Cape Cod and New England uh, looking for shipwrecks, and quite a few of them pop up in this data, and I was adding these all to my database. And while I knew the identities of some of them, the vast majority of them were unidentified and unknown to me. So I reached out one night on Facebook Messenger to a, a friend, uh, a local diver up in New Hampshire, Jeff Goudreau, and just started asking about, if I started sending him coordinates, could he give me the, the identities of these wrecks? So I just have the names for them, so it just wasn't an unidentified wreck in my uh, database. And so as I started sending him information, at first he probably was a little curious why I was being so forthcoming. And after a while he started giving me some identities and I was able to start checking some of these off the list. I asked Jeff if there are any particular shipwrecks they're looking for that maybe I could help them out with. And they mentioned this one wreck called the William H. Mackin, which was a 360 foot long collier that was sunk in a collision with the steamer made of Sterling in July 1942. We had the general location, they've been looking for this for years. And he started giving me some of the hang numbers they were planning on checking out and other areas to see if maybe there was a target worthy of consideration. As I looked up their candidate sites on the website, there was nothing really that popped out. 
So I went back to the historical sinking location of the Mackin, and with about five minutes I found a target. It seemed to fit the bill, it was about 100 meters long, and it just was in the right place, and it just stuck right out. So uh, in a Facebook Messenger exchange, uh, I was able to convey this information to him, and, and Jeff was quite excited. And they basically told me this was uh, going to be a priority site for them to check out. About a month after giving the coordinates to Jeff, they were finally able to check the site out. And because of the precision in the data on his website, they were able to drive right up on the numbers. And after a few dives, they were able to positively identify the wreck as being the William H. Mockin. So it's a far cry from what it used to be 15, 20 years ago, where you had to check out hang numbers and just run grids uh, for days or weeks on end. Now, through the miracle of technology, you can drive right up on something. So it saves you a lot of time and energy, and it's also a lot more efficient and productive. So that's our first video. If you liked it, please give us some feedback below in the comment section. In future videos, I will show you how you can use archived newspapers and several other online resources to compile background and location information on lost shipwrecks in your area, and how you can construct a shipwreck database using this information. I'll also show you some cool tips and tricks on Google Earth that can help you locate and identify shipwrecks. So please, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you soon with our next video installment. Yeah!